This is 5.2.17. So we're told that we're looking at the amount of lumber we can get from each tree, or from trees. And so for each tree, we know that the average amount of lumber you can get is 63,400, and the standard deviation of how much lumber you can get is 2,500. So that would be the mean and standard deviation for one tree. But then it says find the mean and standard deviation for the total from 20 trees. Now what we do is you have to go back to section 2.6. Because in section 2.6, we learned all the rules for how to do combinations of variables. I find it useful to write these out every time instead of trying to use the shortcuts like the book is trying to do. So the book is skipping to the end and not showing you the formulas they're using. So what you do is if you want the total for 20 trees, you have to make a new random variable. So I'm going to call it T. And I have to ask myself, is this one tree times 20, or did I add together 20 trees? Well, it's 20 separate trees. Each tree is going to be different. If each tree is different, you have to make sure you do an add, like x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to x20. So I'm not taking one tree and times it by 20. Each tree can be different. I'm adding together 20 different trees. Once I figure out that out, that's the hardest part. Now I go back to our formulas we learned. So the expected value of my new total is going to be the expected value of x1 plus all the way up to x20. And our expected value rules, go back and rewatch section 2.6 if you don't remember these, say just take each expected value individually. So the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus the expected value of x20. So I'm looking at each of the expected values individually. Well, each expected value is just going to be this average, the 63,400. So basically, I'm just going to add it up, 63,400, and I need to add it up 20 times because there were 20 variables. So it's just going to be 20 times 63,400. I will let you put that into your calculator. Okay. The textbook just kind of skips to this step because they know what the rules are, okay? and they're trying to save space. You can't skip to that step. It's not, you're never going to be able to remember all the different things if you skip to it. Write it out like this every time. Okay, then you're supposed to find the standard deviation. We never find the standard deviation first. You always find the variance first because our rules only work for variance. So we have to find the variance of the total or variance of x1 plus everything up to x20. And the variance rules say just take each individual variance. So it'll be the variance of x1 up to plus the variance of x20. So we just add them all up. And each variance, well, I don't actually know what the variances are, but I do know the standard deviations. So the standard deviations are 2,500. And it might seem like it'd be easier, since I'm having to do this extra step, to just have rules that work with standard deviation. But the rules don't work with standard deviation. They only work for variance. So we'll do this, I forgot what it was, 2,500. So we'll do 2,500 squared for the first one, plus that dot, dot plus 2,500 squared for the last one. And we're going to add that up 20 times, which is going to give me 20 times 2,500 squared. So that's my variance. Now I can find the standard deviation. So the standard deviation for t is just the square root of the variance of the total. So we'll do the square root of 20 times 2,500 squared, which this 20 can come out as the square root of 20, but the 2,500 squared just comes out as 2,500. That's the shortcut formula that the book had. That's how they got to it. Again, don't do it the shortcut way. Write it out every time. Let's try part B. So now we want the mean and average, or the mean and standard deviation for the average of 30 trees. So the average of 30 trees. Well, this one's going to be a little bit different because now if I want the average instead of like a total, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to have to do x1 plus everything up to x30 divided by how many variables I have. And so I have 30 variables. So we can go through, we can do all the rules just like I did up here. You can look back at section 2.6 and figure out what the rules are for this. Or 
we, what we can do is the average comes up so often that we have shortcut rules. Because again, we use this over and over and over again. So the expected value of x bar is just going to be equal to mu, which was the original population mean. So our original mean is that 63,400, I think, right? If not, put the right value in there. And the standard deviation for x bar is always going to be equal to the standard deviation over the square root of n. So this is the original population standard deviation over square root of the sample size. So we just do 2,500 over the square root of 30. These shortcut rules are used so often we can just memorize them. If you didn't want to do it, you could go back to 2.6 and figure out how to use these rules again.